Located at one of the crossroads of the world, Singapore's strategic position has helped her grow into a major entrepot and financial center for trade, communications, and tourism. Today, Singapore proudly owns the world's busiest port, best airport, and best airline. Singapore is also well known around the world as a garden city. Though there are many glittering skyscrapers, there are a lot of green trees and beautiful plants along the roadsides and around the island. This is attributed to the continuous effort of the Singapore government in planting trees and plants. Singapore's uniqueness stems from her harmonious blend of race and culture. The immigrants of the past have given her a mixture of Malay, Chinese, Indian, and European. Each racial group has its own distinctive culture, and there are colorful festivals of special significance all year round. Although the festivals are special to certain races, it is nonetheless enjoyed by all. With open attitude towards spirituality, sincere truth seekers in Singapore thus invited Supreme Master Ching Hai to share her knowledge and wisdom in several occasions. We now invite you to listen to Supreme Master Ching Hai's lecture entitled Love is the Greatest Law in the Universe, delivered on September 24, 1994 in Singapore. developed, so orderly, uh, managed, yeah. and the people are so free. Uh, I mean, of course you still have a lot of laws, and that is inevitable because many people don't want to live an orderly and peaceful life. <laughs> they want to try to risk to have dangerous uh, enterprise and undertaking. Yeah? So for these people, the laws are necessary. Yeah? So that the orderly person, the orderly citizen who respect peaceful and free life will not be endangered, right? So of course uh, we have to understand that. Otherwise, think about I don't feel the pressure when I come. In some country, you feel the pressure when you go into her territory. You just step inside and you feel the atmosphere is very tense, very inhibited. Make you feel something is there, but you don't know what. Yeah. Even though you, your life, are not in danger, and you know nothing could happen to you, you are foreigners, you are visitors, no problem. But still, something lingering in the air make you feel very nervous, <laughs> uh, feel um, not relaxing. Huh? In Singapore, you don't have this feeling. Is that not so? Yes. yes. And yesterday I talked to some of our disciples at home, yeah, our fellow practitioners, and she told me, ah, in Singapore, whatever the government say, we okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Yes. yes. Yes, that's good for you. Because I said to her, because the government here only does good. Yeah. That's why you trust the government. It's not that the, whatever the government say, you okay, but because the government has earned your trust. Is that not so? Yes. yes. And of course there's sometimes mistake here and there, or something sometimes has not tried and tested, so the, the people will voice their opinion, but uh, if it's good, I think the Singapore people are very supportive of the government. And that's what makes Singapore strong. It's not the government alone, it's you, the people, that make Singapore strong and prosperous and united. That's how you're strong, because you're united. Similarly, in the spiritual practice, if we are together, in you know, one spirit and one goal, and then we will achieve the greater uh, benefit for ourselves and for whomever we love to share this benefit with, and whomever like to share this benefit with us. You have always noticed that if the people who always come to the group meditation, doesn't matter how she or he was before, they will improve. Is that not so? Yes. 
because to be together with the friends that have the same idea with you is is really tremendous support and benefit to you. Even if in the mundane way you can see how your nation grow, yeah? Because people are united and one mind together, working under the government's leadership, and then we have no problem. In Asia, even though we are developed like Singapore, I feel the people are still very warm together. We still have neighbors kind, yeah, and we still treasure a lot of value, of spiritual value, as well as the old heritage of our ancestors. Some nice customs and some of the uh, warm relationship between uh, human beings. Even though you are very developed, but you don't have this cold, uh, cut off relationship between neighbors. Is that also a friend? Just between the citizens at large. You still kind of tie together somehow. Not because of uh, responsibility, not because of the shared uh, border, shared country, but because it is natural. I think the Asian people are more close together, is that not so? Hmm. This is what I think we see in a, a kind of uh, the Western lifestyle. If they also develop like that, <laughs> they also want, I would be excellent. Therefore, you hardly will find um, any community apart from, you know, they go to the church every Sunday, pray a little bit and then drink beer next door and then go home. That's different. Some of the tragic tolls of alcohol. 1.8 million alcohol-related deaths per year worldwide. Cost of alcohol-related illnesses, 186.4 billion US dollars in the United States, up to 210 to 665 billion US dollars globally. Disease. Higher amounts of alcohol increase the cancer risk. Even half a glass of wine daily increases the risk of mouth or throat cancer by 168%. Cancer of the liver, breast, colon, liver disease, cardiovascular disease, metal toxicity, brain damage, amnesia and dementia, brain shrinkage, organ failure, heart, liver, kidneys, stomach, pancreas, eyes, birth defects, mental retardation, fetal alcohol syndrome, stunted growth, facial deformity, sudden infant death syndrome, miscarriage, alcohol-related violence, child abuse, 50% of cases, violence toward loved ones, 30% of cases, Violent acts, 40 to 80 percent of cases. Suicides, 20 to 50 percent of cases. Plus more. But you hardly find any community like, uh, for example, like yours, huh? like our group, like this, that you really come together and meditate together. And it's not only in Singapore, in Korea. Taiwan, in Thailand, in Hong Kong. You grow by yourself. I don't really take care. I only come now and again, make sure the children are all right. <laughs> <laughs> Without the support of our community and our like-minded friends, it is very lonely to walk the spiritual path, especially when we are just a beginners and we have not yet the full development of an adult spiritual practitioner. You imagine your family, right? You are married, many of you are married. And then if your family is in harmony and uh, everything you do together is smooth, then you feel more energetic, right? And everything you do, uh, it is uh, easier to be successful. Also, when you encounter some of the difficulty 
it was still easier for you to overcome. Is that not so? But when you have disharmony in the family, then it's very difficult. It doesn't matter what you do. You seem like not wanting to do anymore. And then it seems like impossible for you to achieve any result. Is that not so? So much more if we want to walk all the way to the spiritual mansion of the Most High. If you have companion in supporting in spirit, it is very, very incredible. And there is uh, the energy that each of us radiated. It is incredible when it's put together. Um, for example, the water, if it's only one cup, it's not much. Is that not so? It's fill the cup. It's a fill the cup and it's all right for the cup. But when many cups put together, many hundreds of thousand cups put together, it becomes a swimming pool. And then more than it become lake, and then it become river, and it become ocean. So that's why the group meditation is, is extremely, is extremely important to you. And you probably have learned that by your own experience. Is that not so? Yes. You feel clean, energized when you go out. It is because you share energy. It's all right. You say, well, one cup is okay. Two cups, all right. <laughs> But one cup you cannot clean. But if you put together, it becomes a lake. All of you can swim in it, and it's still there. But if you just pour one cup on your body, not only your body is not cleansed, but <laughs> the cup is gone, the water is gone. You know what I mean? Yes. So it is a privilege for us to go to group meditation. It is really, really a great benefit to mankind as well. Because if the lake is there, not only you are benefit, but many other people in the society who doesn't put water in the lake can also get benefit. Is that not so? Yes. Mm. Uh, recently, our world has a lot of uh, disaster, like uh, drought huh? and dry climate, and heated up the planet due to a lot of weather changing because we have abused so many of the natural resources, as well as some of the disaster from nature, like a burning forest, and then that uh, reduced a lot of rain, and that in turn also heat up our planet. And then the more it heat up, the more dry, the more dry, the less tree, the less tree, the less rain, the less rain, the less tree, and this is the devil's circle. Hmm? And every corner of the earth affect the whole planet. You can know it, you know it very well, because recently the fire in Indonesia yes. affect the whole Singapore, no? Yes. And Malaysia and the neighboring country. So actually, from these kind of natural lessons, we can tell that one person or one place of this planet will affect other parts of our planet. Therefore, if you yourself, your heart, your mind, your speech, your action are pure, how much beneficial can it be to this planet? This is very logical. We have no need to argue or to demonstrate. Every place has its own atmosphere. So when you go into the funeral service or a hospital, yeah, you feel different from when you go into a church. Is that not so? Or when you go into the slaughterhouse, yeah? where all the animals are killed for meat. You feel different. I don't know if you can feel, but I feel. Do you feel? Can you feel? Yes. Yes, yes. of course, huh? Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol levels, reduce type 2 diabetes, prevent stroke conditions, reverse atherosclerosis, reduce heart disease risk 50%, reduce heart surgery risk 80%, prevent many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increase life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, conserve up to 70% clean water, save over 70% of the Amazonian rainforest from clearance for animal grazing. A solution for world hunger free up 3,433 billion hectares of land, 
free up 760 million tons of grain every year, or half the world's grain supply. Consume one-third fossil fuels of those used for meat production. Reduce pollution from untreated animal waste. Maintain cleaner air. Save 4.5 tons of emissions per U.S. household per year. Stop 80% of global warming. Plus more. Save your life, be veg, go green. For example, last time we went to the refugee camp, it's really a terrible feeling, you know. I could not help but just keep crying. I could have no voice to even sing. I was choked with the atmosphere of the camp. Of course, we can rise ourselves above it. But since we want to share the suffering, and we want to understand the suffering of other beings, then we can feel it. You know what I mean? If you don't want to have anything to do with it, of course you can rise above it and have nothing to do with it. Like the lotus in the muddy water, you don't have to be contaminated. But since we live in this world, we want to share, you know, happiness as well as sorrow with our fellow brothers and sisters, and we will feel the difference between each place in this planet. That is because the atmosphere is different from different places. The atmosphere created by this group of people is different from the atmosphere that created by another group of people or another person. Sometimes uh, you come and see a friend or a relative just before they even spoke anything. You just hold their hand, you feel what they feel. Is that not so? There is a man in uh, America. He was a very bad boy. Since his childhood, he was a very bad boy. He just hit anybody or punch anybody that happened to uh, make him angry or not to his liking. And he just hit them. And he was a kind of very violent person. Until one day, he got struck by the lightning from heaven. Then he was dead for a while. Kind of, uh, you know, declared dead by doctors, near death experience. And then between that, he went to heaven. He went to a place, and then all the beings tell him, they show him the kind of life that he has led up to now. Violence and unfair and suppressing people and things like that. And then afterward, they told him, if you continue like this, all the disaster will be upon you. And then they also show him a kind of, a lot of disaster going on in the world from that time up to present time. Most of the things that has been shown to him has already happened. They told him that if you continue your life like you have done, all this disaster will be upon you. So of course he made it good and he tried to change his way of life. Then afterward, because of promise to change his way of life, God has given him a lot of ability, including the ability to read other people's mind and to know their sickness and to know what they have done in that day. So whenever a person comes to him, just come to him and just hold their hands and you know what happened to that person that day, exactly everything. So when a person is in sorrow or happiness, you be able to tell sometimes, right? Even though without this psychic ability, you also can know, you can feel something, right? Sometimes the person don't say anything, but you keep asking, what's wrong with you? Hey, well, what's wrong? What's the matter with you? Is that not so? Yeah. It is because the atmosphere of that person is very obvious to your inner feeling. There's something wrong with him. Even though she or he keeps smiling and talking non-stop, but you still feel something is wrong. Huh? And then you ask, what's wrong with you? Well, you tell me what's wrong. And I say, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> but then you still know something wrong. That is because the atmosphere, individual atmosphere is very, very obvious sometimes. If the uh, feeling is very strong, then it makes an impact to other people. It makes an impression on the face and it's written in their eyes. That's why the psychic people, they can read people's thoughts. They can read the feeling. 
they can also tell you what you're thinking because that is the impression that we make to the clearly psychic person. The master not necessarily have to know this, okay? Don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> and you hold my hand, don't worry about this. I will not look into anything. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Sometimes we know. If necessary, if you want the teacher to know, you know. If not necessary, you don't know, okay? So whatever you do bad, I don't care, all right? <laughs> but I trust you that you don't do anything bad because you already know, huh? You already know what benefit you can get from keeping a pure being within yourself, right? So it is your choice and your decision that you want to stay positive and pure, yes? Not because Master says so. Every time you come to meditation group, you remind yourself, right? I keep the precept. I don't, 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 don't. <laughs> I do, 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 do. <laughs> okay, and if you don't want to remind yourself and you don't want to choose a pure lifestyle, then you just stay away, right? Until you're ready, and then you come back and say, okay, I don't, 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 don't. I do, 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 do. <laughs> I keep, I don't, uh, you know, I don't kill, I don't steal, I don't lie. And I do tell the truth, I do help the people, I do charity, I do try to be loving. So this is your choice, all right? And uh, that's why we try to tell people, to remind ourselves when they come in. And if you choose to live another kind of life, you know, a less positive, less pure life, okay, then you just stay home and enjoy your freedom <laughs> of negativity. <laughs> Until you are ready to sacrifice a little bit of your ego, yeah, a little bit of your habit, and then come here and join the pure people. Mm? Otherwise, we don't have the right to contaminate our next person when we don't choose to walk the right path. You know what I mean? They're the same path. That's all there is. There's no discrimination, nothing. It's just pro-choice, okay? You do what you want. Just so like recently, the government also encouraged people to keep healthy lifestyle, huh? The government of Singapore worry about everything. <laughs> Not better. Like a parent for spoiled children, huh? I feel the government is not bad, pretty cool. <laughs> keeping busy and keeping eyes on everybody. <laughs> so if you want to join in this healthy program, then you enroll in and you do exercise with people, right? Otherwise, you should not come there and poke your teeth and poke your nose <laughs> while people do in up and down exercises. Is that not so? It doesn't look good for other people. It might discourage the other people. Will you keep sitting there and poking your nose? <laughs> or standing around and, you know. <laughs> Instead of exercising, you're scratching. And then the other people might laugh or might feel discouraged or might feel funny because you keep poking your nose at them also. <laughs> and they probably feel embarrassed also, feel uneasy if you keep watching them and not doing the same thing. You know what I mean? That's why when we go to the group meditation together, it should really uh, intentionally try to be with the group and do exactly the same thing, keeping ourselves pure, speech, body and mind, as well as the spirit, purify ourselves. Otherwise, there is no use to come to the group meditation because we will not progress, keeping our way. <laughs> if a teacher tries to teach you English and tell you to do homework every day, and then even ABC you don't want to learn, and then what is the use of showing up at the class every day? and making trouble for the teacher for wasting the time of other classmates because they also have to share their time with you. Hmm? Well, the teacher asks you everything you don't know, but you also spend some time from the teacher and then occupy a place in the expensive Singapore land, for example. <laughs> you know, in Singapore land is expensive, no? Yeah. Uh, for example. Huh? And if you don't want to learn, then you shouldn't be there. In Singapore, every inch is measured with gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, 
I stay in a house of uh, one of our brothers. The, the size is not very large, but six rooms. Why? Because they build like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're very small, but they build like this. You know, the staircase is also a spiral. <laughs> and so there are many rooms like this. Yes. So in Singapore, it's expensive, mm -hmm. especially in Singapore. So make sure that your seat is worth it. <laughs> If you don't want to develop other worldly knowledge beyond the world knowledge, then might as well stay home and broaden your worldly knowledge. And that's uh, probably helpful to you. Then eh? occupy your seat <laughs> at home and increasing your ability uh, of uh, worldly knowledge. Hmm? He, uh, when people come into group meditation, at that time they want to develop super worldly knowledge. The first question is. Dear Grand Master, can you please enlighten me as to whether the method, convenient method for me, is truly safe? That is, will it affect one's mentality, become uh, mentally unbalanced? Uh, is there anything to fear when practicing this method? Thank you. <laughs> it scares me. <laughs> Do we have any mental problem? <laughs> By the way. <laughs> No problem. They say no problem. Well, <laughs> see, they already practiced many years and they say no problem. So you should believe your own citizen, all right? <laughs> if I say something, you say, oh, she's a foreigner. She, she makes soft sell approach. <laughs> and this is all Singapore people. You all right, huh? Yes. No mental disorder? No. No, no depression? No. What do you get after that? Happiness. Yes. Enjoy. Okay. What else? Cheerful. Huh? Cheerful. What else? Blissful. Blissful. Do things fast. What else? Effective. Effective. See beyond. Huh? See beyond the world. See beyond the world. All oh, that. Oh, that system a little bit higher. Huh? Okay. <laughs> see beyond the world. You see that? What is beyond there? <laughs> Huh? Crystal palace. Crystal palace. Oh, okay. Because you like crystal. <laughs> there are diamond palaces you didn't see. <laughs> it's very cheap still. <laughs> Low class mention. <laughs> what else? Wiser. Wiser. Oh, that's more intelligent. Even, oh no, not different. Different. Okay, wiser. Anything else? Huh? More compassionate. More compassionate. Oh wow, really? <laughs> Brother, sister, that's what you get after initiation. You are more loving, yeah, more intelligent, more efficient, and faster in everything you do. So don't worry. Can people who have previous experiences with drugs make progress in meditation if they resolve to change themselves? Yes, they can. It's difficult for them. They need a lot of willpower and uh, strong determination to change their life. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Drug, uh, in the beginning, offers people some kind of bliss, and then they think this is heaven, and then they like it, and then they take more and more, and then they become addicted to it. These people are very, very pitiful. All they wanted is heaven. They feel so much pressure in this world, and then they want to have blissful feeling. But they went to the wrong store. Our drugstore is better. <laughs> Everlasting, no side effect. Yeah. <laughs> Everlasting bliss, no side effect, and improving every day. The drug make it degrade you every day and drag you down and down and down. It's terrible. Some of the tragic tolls of drug abuse over 200,000 deaths each year. Cost of 181 billion US dollars each year in the United States. 33 billion US dollars in the UK. Lifetime cost of current drug addiction amounts to 575 billion US dollars in the UK. Harmful effects, brain damage, stroke, heart disease, liver disease,
tuberculosis, emphysema, cancer, depression, suicide, permanent memory loss, mental illness, higher infant mortality, increased crime and violence, impotence. Crime and violence. Illegal drugs are a factor in 50% of burglaries in the United Kingdom each year. In the U.S., 60% of people arrested each year have been taking illegal drugs. 650 heroin addicts in the U.S. committed 70,000 crimes in a three-month period. Social costs. U.S. businesses lose 100 billion U.S. dollars per year due to employees drug and alcohol abuse. Australians pay 53 billion U.S. dollars per year for health care, law enforcement, and lost productivity of drug users. Environmental costs. Every gram of cocaine produced destroys 4.4 square meters of rainforest, with 300,000 hectares of rainforest lost each year to cocaine production. Death. 52 people die each day due to drugs in the U.S. In Canada, substance abuse is attributed to 21% of total deaths and 23% of potential life years lost due to early mortalities. Plus more. Dear Master, how did God get created in the first place? Can you talk about the first master to grace the earth? Wow. Oh. I wasn't there. I'm younger than all of you. And you ask me such a question. I'm supposed to ask you. You have gray hair. The one that So can you tell us what happened? Um, in the beginning, huh? Or uh, always, God is enjoying himself. Hmm? God is the greatest energy that pervades all the universe. And the energy, when it's rested, you know, is not stirring. Nothing comes out of it. But within this energy, there are a lot of seeds, different seeds. And then when it steers, this God energy, or God steers, or wakes up, we call it wakes up, God wakes up, and then everything is swung out to existence. And then according to the seed, it's sprung out into different shapes, different forms, yeah, different construction. And then so we become like this. And the universe has come into being. Okay? And after sometimes probably God sleeps again and everything comes back to sleep. <laughs> and then after some time spring back again. It's very difficult to explain this in a human language, because it's something mystical. We can say something scientifically. It's very similar, like the theory of the Big Bang, you know? And then this is called God, the sleeping energy, the dormant energy. And when awakened, then everything comes into being, according to the quality inside the seeds. Yeah? And the first master who graces the earth, I forgot. Huh? I forgot. You meditate and have a look, okay? <laughs> How to heal the pride and hatred? Thank you, Master. Meditate. Meditation. Huh? Meditation will help you. Help you in many ways. And erase a lot of bad habits. And pride is also a habit. You were not born with pride. You were not born with arrogance. You were not born with hatred. These are only accumulated habits which you uh, receive during your life because you have come in contact with other people or the circumstances. And then consequently, you derive the side effect of these interrelationship with the situation or with other people. So this is only a habit. And habit we can change. We can change habit. Just like before, you're not used to brushing your teeth, and after a while, you know, if you don't brush your teeth often, the teeth will fall out, and you go to the dentist, and he drills you, and that hurts. And then you change, and then you brush your teeth three, four times a day. It's a habit only, okay? Don't worry. You meditate, and when you meditate, the outer teacher will teach you 
to keep to the positive issues of every day. And then you gradually will forget the negative side of your habit. That is the first step. The second step, the inner master will guide you inside also, and then bend you to the positive tendency and the way. And then you are further and further away from the negative. So do not worry, huh? You are not born saint and you are not born sinner. It just happened. We can cultivate a saint of ourselves, or we can make a sinner our us. Huh? This is only a choice. All right. We are honored to have you with us today on Words of Wisdom. Please tune in tomorrow for part two of Love is the Greatest Law in the Universe. And now, Golden Age Technology, coming up next on Supreme Master Television, right after Noteworthy News. May your heart be filled with joy and tranquility. <laughs>